So the Institution for Social and Policy Studies has a threefold mission. We want to do high quality social science research. We want to use that research to shape policy. And we want to shape also the next generation of leaders in the policy process. We have the Center for the Study of American Politics that's thinking about democracy and its operation. Uh, we also have the new Center for the Study of Health. And finally, we're creating the new Center for the Study of Inequality. Uh, that center, headed by Veshla Weaver, will be focused on inequality and its relationship to American governance. My aim in bringing us here is simple, to explore the prospects and dimensions of minority flourishing in the United States so that we can embark on a project of American democracy and equality that reaches beyond those formal pr protections that were bequeathed to us by the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, the Fair Housing Act, and others. We're at a moment of both sustained, impressive cultural progress and yet yawning substantive gaps. We may not all agree on the right questions to ask or the right variables to plug into our regression analyses or even how high the hurdles are, but at least I hope we can agree on that, that that project is a worthy one. Quiet crisis of people who uh, don't have uh, bank accounts, who pay too much for whatever they do purchase, who are really constrained in terms of access to credit, and what the consequences of that are. And so here again, economic freedom is not economic justice. The most notable feature of American politics over the last generation is that in the face of rising inequality, we haven't seen that much of a government response. That's not because Americans don't care about it. Middle class Americans are very concerned about the sense that the American dream is slipping away. But they have very little faith in the ability of our public leaders to address the problem. And it's precisely political scientists and other social scientists who can step back from the debates of the moment and think about the relationship among political institutions, the processes that produce public policy, and the real world consequences of those policies. It's precisely those social scientists who should be engaged in the debate about how our political institutions and public policies should be reformed. Progressives have uh, rightfully spent a tremendous amount of time arguing for decarceration. That effort has to shift to really focus on investment and integration. Before people have settled on a particular research agenda, collected the data, gone out, gotten the grant funding, started writing papers, presenting at conferences, before any of that happens, I want them to put their biggest, boldest idea down in four pages or less, distill it for a broad audience. We, as a team of six, you know, half a dozen researchers, vet these and talk about them and go back and forth on them and examine the possibilities. Then we begin to talk about, okay, you know what? This kind of data is the data that we need to go collect. These are the people we need to go talk to. These are the archives that would be helpful here. Then we go out and we do the research. We actually have multiple kinds of interactive inequalities depending on who we are, where we are, where we live, we all may experience some form of inequality compared to someone else or some other group, but it could be vastly different. The goal is to produce research that policymakers, journalists, civic organizations can use in their activities to give them a knowledge base so that when they produce policy, when they debate ideas, they've got something there. That is my real I ideal for the center. That is my, I, I can go home now, goal, is to, is to have it produce something that means graduate students can begin their careers, that means we have a better handle on how this is being experienced in American communities, that means that um, it's got a lifeblood beyond just a day in the center.